Uh, today I'm just going to share a few life lessons that we can learn from the life of Peter, Simon Peter, the apostle of Jesus. So as you all know, uh, Peter was uh, Jesus' most prominent disciple. And uh, he was by profession a fisherman, and he was also one of the leaders of the early church. So the story of Peter starts with Jesus calling Peter to follow him. So we read about that story in Luke 5. Uh, so Jesus gets into Peter's boat to preach to the multitudes. And uh, in Luke 5, verse 4 and 5, let's just read that. Yeah. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let, your, let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and got nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So Simon obeys what Jesus says, and uh, they get a huge catch that the boat almost begins to sink. And we see Peter's reaction in verse 8. So, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So I wonder what our reactions would be if we encountered such a miracle. So would it be similar to Peter's? So he, Peter realized at that moment that he was in the presence of the Holy Incarnate. And uh, his reaction was to say, please leave. Because he couldn't stand that holiness uh, when he realized his own depravity and wretchedness. So that's what we also, maybe it uh, resembles some of our own salvation experiences. So that first moment that we realized that we are a sinner, so we would have understood our own wretchedness, especially in contrast to the holy God. So just like Peter, our reaction was probably to run away from that holiness because it was too good for us to comprehend. And uh, Simon Peter had known Jesus as the holy God. And uh, Jesus, despite all his shortcomings, asked him to follow him and make him a fisher of men. And uh, Peter forsook all and followed him. So the next thing we see about Peter is the two faithful confessions that he makes. The first one we read is in Matthew 16, verse 13 onwards. So when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So Peter has full revelation about the divinity of Christ and who Christ is, that is the Son of God. And uh, it has been made clear to him. And as Jesus says, this is not revealed to him by flesh or blood, but by the Father. And the second confession that he makes is in John 6. So the context of this is after Jesus has said a very controversial saying about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, without which we would not have life in us. Uh, a lot of uh, his followers stop following him from that because it was too controversial among the Jews to eat somebody's flesh or drink somebody's blood. So then Jesus asked the 12 in John 6 verse 67 to 69. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So here we see Peter's full commitment to Jesus and also how he exclusively believes in Christ alone. And he asked, to, Lord, to whom shall we go? So is this what we truly believe about Jesus? Do we truly believe that there is actually no place that we can go apart from him? And are we that dependent on him? Uh, do we exclusively believe that Jesus is the only one who can save us? And that nothing else can replace Jesus in our life? That he alone has the words of eternal life? So Peter's confessions show that he believed in Jesus alone and he believed the right things about Jesus. And this revelation only God can grant to us. And also Peter witnesses a life-changing moment on the Mount of Transfiguration. So we read that uh, the appearance of Jesus' face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. 
So in Luke 9, verse 34 and 35, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Peter gets to hear the voice of Father God and proclaiming the divinity of Jesus directly from the Father. And that reinforces his belief about Christ. And another lesson we can learn about through Peter's life is his faith. So in the initial stages, we know that Peter knows all the right things about Jesus. And he's fully convinced about who Jesus is. We all know the story of Jesus walking on the water. So Peter step, steps out of the boat too. And we read about that in Matthew 14, verse 28 to 30. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. So Peter says, Lord, if it is you, with a hint of doubt. After which he steps out of the boat and he is able to walk on the water. But only until he sees the boisterous winds and begins to sink. So the same Peter that confesses his faith that Jesus is Lord is not able to practice his faith. And verse 31 says, And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So Jesus calls him, O oh, you of little faith. Jesus knew that Peter had a sincere faith in who Christ was. But only a mere intellectual faith in who God is cannot save us. So that brings the question, what kind of faith does save us? So James 2 verse 19 says, You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So Peter believed the right things about Jesus, but yet he is of little faith. In our personal lives, we may experience something like this. When we pray privately, we are able to pray, Lord, I live for you, or Lord, I mean, I'll die for you. But when we are out there in the world, we fail many times. And that's probably because we are stuck with mere intellectual faith. But saving faith, it involves a little more than that. It, of course, be involves believing the essential facts concerning Jesus Christ. But it also involves a trust in God. And as Galatians 5 verse 6 says, faith working through love. So even in my own Christian life, uh, I used to have intellectual faith for a long time. Only that. I knew Jesus and I believed he could save me. But that kind of faith is futile if I do not have a deep love and trust in God. And that is what Peter lacked at that point in his life. So the same Peter that vehemently proclaims loyalty to his master uh, in Mark 14 verse 29 uh, Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. And in verse 31, but Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And the same Peter ends up denying Jesus three times with curses and swears as Mark records. So, and we start to think, you know, how could he deny Jesus after um, following him for three years, uh, in being with him all those years in his ministry? But how many times have we denied Jesus in our daily life? And how many times have we pretended we don't know Jesus or kept silent when we should have defended our faith? But um, whenever I do this, I have done it many times. And I always think about Peter's story and how Jesus has restored Peter. And the, the moment that Peter goes back and weeps bitterly when he remembers the Lord's word, words predicting his denial, that moment God had already forgiven him. But then again in John 21, the events after the resurrection, we see that Jesus again publicly restores Peter. So after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus meets his disciples on the shore while they are fishing. And uh, again, they get a huge catch when they obey Jesus. And John identifies Jesus and says, it is the Lord. And this time Peter has no doubt and he uh, immediately plunges into the sea to meet Jesus on the shore. And then on the shore, for the three times that Peter denied being a disciple of Jesus, three times in the presence of the other disciples, Jesus reverses Peter's denials through three corrective responses. He asks Peter, son of John, do you love me? To which Peter replies, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
So Jesus roots out all shame and guilt from Peter by explicitly connecting his purpose in these questions of love to Peter's denial by asking three times. So while the third time grieved Peter, he was, it was through this intentional correction that Peter could receive Jesus' love and his call to follow him once again. And also Jesus is not simply forgiving Peter and restoring their previous relationship, but also reinstating Peter to his commission as an evangelist and a fisher of men, and also giving him an additional responsibility to shepherd the flock. So God cares about us so much. And if only we go back in repentance to him instead of running away from him, like Judas Iscariot did. Jesus is welcoming us with open arms and he continues to ask the question, do you love me? So if you ever feel like you have failed God so many times and or you are at the point of no return, or you have sinned too much and you can't go back to God, just remember that Peter also felt, felt the same way. But God restored him and he can restore you too. And the story continues. In Acts, we get to see a completely transformed Peter. So in Acts chapters 2, 3, and 4, and many other places in Acts, uh, Peter, now full of love for Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit, stands up and bro boldly proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God gives us strength if only we return to him. If we truly strive to love God with all our hearts, mind, and soul, he will empower us to stand boldly for him. Even the same us that has denied him countless times, we can stand up for his cause. And Peter remembered the Lord's word until his death. So in, an ep in his epistle in 1 Peter, he, while he's giving advice to spiritual leaders about how to be a, an example to the flock, uh, 1 Peter 5 verse 3 and 4. Nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown, crown of glory that does not fade away. So he remembers what Jesus said to him, that task that he gave him to tend his flock. And he completed that mission to tend to Jesus' flock. And history says that he was martyred for his faith and was crucified upside down because he felt unworthy to die in the same manner as his master. So to conclude, what we can learn from Peter's life is that God chooses people with shortcomings, but he makes a testimony out of that same person so that the glory goes to him alone, so that we can take no credit. And if you are ever stuck in a place of intellectual faith, then, but you don't think you have a real passion or love for God, just remember that God is always with his arms stretched out to you, waiting for you to return to him. And that no sin is too great that he can't forgive and that he will restore you and give you a new heart if you confess your sins. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you are teaching us through your word, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you are teaching us things from the life of your followers, Father, your apostles, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that... Mm, we are able to read your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything that you are teaching us, Lord. Help us to grow in love towards you, Lord Jesus, and not just know you, Lord Jesus, as though we are reading a book, Father, but fall in love with you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all the second chances that you give us, Lord Jesus, to return back to you, Lord Jesus. Let us never forget, Father, our goal, Lord Jesus, which is to love you, Lord Jesus, and not anything else, Father. All the faith, let us have the faith, the right kind of faith, Lord Jesus. Give it to us, Father. Give us your gift of salvation, Lord Jesus, the right kind of faith, Lord Jesus. Please help us, Father, and restore each and every one of us, Lord Jesus, back to you, Father, back to your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Help us to be an example wherever we go, Lord Jesus, of your love, Father, to others and grow in love towards you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In and through your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the Gata is on the Sham, third chair, the Nangal Ganagrio, my own wishes. You know, very much, Nangal, either very each channel, subscribe with it, Langal, Dio, Ipatane, on the subscribe with you, is on the Sham, material goody on the forward is Uduka, Nangal Kidanagrio, my Nangal, third chair to Adamatlorkum, Ranagrio, my Tiruan, other Karnavai. God bless you.